because we didn't recoup our expenses on our last album, K-Smell Records is back with another round of those treasured golden hits of the 70s. Fall in love again with titles like Come Flail Away by Styx. And such timeless hits as It's a Toothache by Ronnie Tyler, Half Speed by Cher Alike, That'd Be My Face by Rosalinda Bierstadt, Young Armenians by Davey Ginsu, and who could ever forget slow dancing to that touching, in more than one way favorite, You Tied Up My Wife by Danny Boone. Pick it. Reminisce to fond non-existent memories with songs like You Made Me Feel Ted Danson by Doomsayer. <laughs> My Cart by Todd Stewart. My heart, you're in my soul. Be my and Temperamental Baby by Robert Welch's Grape Juice. Blowing, blowing my and to fill up space, we've also included If You Freeze Me Now by Berwyn. I'm Sleazy by Keith Carratine. Quit Following Me by Gene Sus. Dr. My Thighs by Ash Brown. And one of my personal favorites, Are You Here Again by Molly Parton. Has 25 original interpretations of classics all brought together on your choice of two LPs, six compact cassettes, or 17 eight track tapes. Order before midnight. Send check or money order to more golden hits of the 70s. P.O. Box 1564, beautiful downtown Aurora, Colorado 90125. Credit cards now accepted. Again, that's more golden hits of the 70s. P.O. Box 1564, beautiful downtown Aurora, Colorado 90125. Please allow six to eight weeks for delivery. And welcome to the Oddity Archive, the show that brings together all your favorite oldies, then realizes that the major labels would have my ass in a sling in a heartbeat over it. So you know what that means. It's time for another round of record ripoffs. What am I doing? I hate disco! This ad should look familiar to anyone that saw the first record ripoffs episode. At the time, I was just using this ad to give an example of a sound-alike compilation, but like some cruel joke, I've since found a copy of this set. And two other TEJ Records titles. <laughs> Natch. Unfortunately, I haven't been able to find out anything about TEJ Records. Not even what TEJ stands for. But here's what I do know. TEJ was putting out records at least as far back as 1974, and at least as late as 1979. And if I didn't know any better, I'd swear that TEJ was sharing recordings with Peter Pan Records. So let us take a little look at my modest collection of TEJ titles. Now this first one should look fairly familiar, huh? Uh, this is called Hustle 76, and uh, I'll let you figure out when this one was released. Now there is no information on here on the front, on the back, no performers, no song titles, no nothing. You had to buy it first and take the records out just to find out what songs were on it. And even then there's no indication of performers on here. So isn't that beautiful? Now, the next one I have is the now infamous Muskrat Love from 1977, and uh, I, I just love that artwork. Say what you will about it, I, I just think that's kind of cool. Now, by this point, you are actually getting song titles and stuff listed on the back, and even the artists, if you can actually read it. 
at the top it says bi-dimensional sound and notice it's just a tad hard to read compared to all the other text yeah again you don't think that was on purpose do you and then we get to my last tej title from 1978 this one's called saturday night disco and by this point the federal trade commission had gotten involved and said you need to start listing performers and stuff on your sleeves and so in response, TEJ just slapped a sticker on the front saying performed by dynamic sound and indeed just to drive the point home, they stuck another one on the back. But at this point you were getting a better idea of what you were getting and I just can't help but wonder if this isn't kind of the reason that labels like TEJ kind of went under starting around 1980. So if I have anything nice to say at all about TEJ and Soundalike Records in general, it's that when you're dealing with more of a studio-based group like Silver Connection or Van McCoy, both of which you just heard a little bit of a minute ago, thanks Erwin, they're really not all that bad and they can be pretty damn close to the originals. It's just when they start tackling artists that have, you know, a little more personality that things start really going to hell. Another thing about TEJ Records is that they seem to enjoy inserting these obnoxious, superfluous synthesizer lines into some of their recordings. And where there should be an obnoxious synth line, it's conspicuously absent. The next couple of albums are from an entity known as Fantastic F Incorporated. Now, the F could stand for any number of things, I'm really not sure, but I think it's probably fail or f up or something like that. Now, this LP came out in 1973 and is called Super Hits Volume 17 and is supposedly performed by a group called the Normandies. Now, if you take a look at the back here, the very, very stained back of this one, you'll see a bunch of ads for other entries in this series, and they're performed by such amazing groups as The Joint Account, The Pierced Arrow, uh, The Board Members, The Sweet Nickels. I mean, I love The Sweet Nickels. Uh, seriously, though, there's an error on the front cover here, and you wouldn't know it until you listen to the record, but it claims to have a rendition of the song Happy by Bobby Darren, which was the man's last single. 
Now, if you've never heard Happy before, it's, uh, appropriately enough, a rather lengthy, dreary ballad. It's actually the Rolling Stones song, Happy, on here, because the two are so easily confused. And, uh, for all the cheap, crappy vinyl that I've discussed on this show, we have a new champion, hands down. I mean, I swear, this isn't even vinyl. I think this is just a paper plate that got pressed by accident. Unfortunately, performance-wise and sonically, this is just a little more representative of this album. She serves them whiskey and wine. Sailors say brandy. Go find girl. I found a love like you would be such a fine. My other fantastic fail album is this one. This one's from 1978, and it's uh, obviously not an album per se, but an eight track. And it's called Today's Top Hits, featuring short people, because a piss poor Randy Newman cover would obviously be a real selling point on something like this. Now, I know it's hard to see the artwork, so uh, Ed, can we get a, our scan of that up on the screen? There we go. Now, something about the condition of the artwork on this thing it makes this look just almost religious. I mean, well, granted, if Jesus were eavesdropping on a 70s key exchange party, or Ega was just imagining himself holding the whole world in his hands. Who knows? Anyway, uh, the highlight of this album for me is... How do I describe this? An Elvis impersonator's rendition of Elvis's posthumously released live rendition of My Way by Frank Sinatra. Regrets I had a few then again, too few to mention. You haven't heard the last of that one. Anyway, this last one should be fairly familiar already to our more ardent followers. Now, this came out in 1973 on Pickwick Records, and this is called Super Hits Volume 9. And I found this literally just a day or two after we finished the last ripoffs episode. And uh, the name King's Road might ring a bell. Remember, they're just wonderful, spine-tingling rendition of the theme from Laverne and Shirley, yeah. Well, I think I found their long-lost demo tape. You had one eye in the mirror as you watched yourself go by And all the girls dreamed that they'd be your partner They'd be your partner and you're so vain that's just the tip of the iceberg with this baby. I, I can only imagine how many horny teens and 20-somethings picked this album up just on the strength of the cover. And then when they put this atrocity on their turntables, they uh, were so disappointed that they willfully abused their copies. I mean, my copy, somebody decided to put their cigarette out right in the middle of Lobo's Don't Expect Me to Be Your Friend, which is actually one of the better cuts on here. Love you too much to never start like the news. So let's just let the story down again. Now, I personally would have chosen their rendition of Love Train by the OJs to put my smoke out on, but to each their own. Just one of the 20 top hits in this giant collection from TEJ Records. Listen to the sounds of today on these two super albums. Yes, today's biggest hits. The Entertainer, Hooked on a Feeling, and Oh My My. You get 
like chart busters, like the show must go on. Sunshine on my shoulder and Mockingbird. Well, the rain exploded with a mighty crash as we Dynamite, it's banned on the run. And you also get Let It Ride and Seasons in the Sun. Don't you worry about a thing. Don't you worry about a thing. Yes, it's one of today's 20 top hits. Tubular bells and top 20 rock. The big, big sounds of today's big, big hits on two super LPs. Because of low royalties, we can't reveal the artists. The greatest rock album ever for just $4.99. Money back if not delighted. Here's how to order. Mail $4.99 for records and $6.99 for tape to 20 top hits. Post Office Box 9985, Washington, D.C. You get these two exclusive albums for this one low price. So you don't forget, send before midnight tomorrow. That's $4.99 for records, $6.99 for tape to 20 top hits. Box 9985, Washington, D.C. So I know it seems like I just kind of quickly ran through the individual albums, but I did that for a reason, and that's because I wanted to discuss some commonalities between all these releases, and given that most of these came out between 1976 and 78, there's a pretty good degree of overlap between all these records and 8-tracks. And so not only do I wind up with multiple songs by the same artists, but <laughs> worse yet, I wind up with multiple versions of the same songs. Get comfy, kids. This is going to take a while. Only these rip-off records could make Sean Cassidy sound like a total badass by comparison. Anyway, as I said earlier, generally the stronger the personality of the original artist, the weaker the covers tended to turn out. And realizing this, the rip-off artists, if you will, 
just wouldn't even try to replicate the originals. I mean, they'd just have a few drinks first and, you know, let the chips fall where they may. But more often than not, they'd have a few drinks first, and then they'd try twice as hard to imitate the original artists. Believe it or not, I actually get kind of weirdly nostalgic when I listen to some of these ripoff records. I mean, because some of them, when I listen to them, I mean, I'm 14 years old again. I'm in the garage with a couple of friends and we're trying to figure out, say, smoke on the water or something. <laughs> from our recurring VHS Vault series, I like to refer to these next moments as keep rolling moments. And uh, I think you'll figure out why pretty quickly. Everybody is out of sight. They don't walk, they don't bite. They keep things loose, they keep things light. Everybody was dancing in the Thank you. 
So I guess we ought to get into some of those classic record ripoff episode standbys, huh? Well, how about some bad vocals? Disco edition! Mostly. Hey! All right! Oh, coaster. But of course, as we all know, bad vocals are always best served with a nice side of wrong lyrics. So to round out today's show, let's take a look at some of those flat out WTF moments. At the front door, good buddy. Mercy sakes alive, it looks like we got us a convoy. Well, the dark of the moon on the 6th of June, and again we're pulling logs. Cab over Pete with a reefer on and a Jimmy hauling hogs. He's a heading for bear on the I-10 about a mile out of Sheiky Town. I says, Big Pen, this here's a rubber duck, and I'm about to put the hammer down. That's it for today's archive. 
Join us next time when I try to decipher the French words in Rod Stewart's Tonight's the Night, and uh, then take a cold shower. Get these two exclusive albums for this one low price so you don't forget, send before midnight tomorrow. 